Need a cool FAQ web part, but you have to use out-of-the-box SharePoint only? Maybe you don't have a Copilot license yet and you can't use that new cool uh, Copilot-powered FAQ. Either way, I've got you covered in this week's video where we I show you this free solution that's using out-of-the-box SharePoint. Let's get into it. I'm on my test onboarding site. Now, we're gonna be adding an FAQ to this page right here, probably down here at the bottom. The first thing we're gonna do is set this list up. This is using JSON formatting. And so let's go ahead and go into edit. Actually, we're gonna be adding a column to this. We are gonna be using the title column, but when the, then we're gonna add a multiple lines of text field. It's going to be called answer. And it is not going to be using enhanced rich text. It's a plain text field, but it's a multi-line field. Uh, we do want to require that this contains information because how useful is an FAQ without the A? So uh, we'll save this. And now we'll go into grid view. Let me go ahead and paste in some data. There we go. Let's save that. So. We've got the title column as the question. We have the answer column as the answer. We need to do a few more things before we can try this in the web part. Now, I mentioned this is JSON formatting. If you're not familiar with that or you're trying to learn this so that you can create things just like this, I've got an online course that is perfect for you that'll get you up to speed today and you can start creating solutions just like this. There's a link in the description below, so go check it out. So now we're going to um, make a new view. We don't want to change the all items view because it's always good to kind of leave that leave it untouched uh, so you could always go back to the raw list data data itself and do things. But uh, what we're going to do is create a new view. We'll do a save view as, and we can just call this one, uh, how about FAQ? Makes sense to me. So let's save that. Now we've got a few other things that we want to do to this uh, before we copy in this JSON formatter. And by the way, there is an update to this formatter. I, there was a bug I found when I was um, testing this thing out. So I have submitted a change to GitHub to the original repository to incorporate this, but I will show you this extra code. So in case you're watching this before that bug gets added or the bug fix gets added, uh, you'll know exactly what to copy in. So let's go to edit current view. And we're going to hide the title column because we're going to be grouping on title. And our formatter will handle uh, displaying that question, which is in the title field, in our display. So we're going to hide this one. Otherwise, we would see the grouping, which will be the title or the question. And then inside there, you would still see the question again. So it didn't look quite right. Uh, and if you see that result, that's the reason why you're seeing that. Then we want to group by the title column. So we're going to be grouping all of this data by the question that will give us some the ability to get that collapsible nature uh, to this FAQ. So we're going to save this now. And then we're going to go and format this view. This is actually copying in the magic that will make this all come together. So we're going to go over to this particular sample. There's a link in the description below. And it's called Grouped FAQs. It was created by Chris Kent, one of the legends in JSON formatting. Uh, so thank you, Chris, for this one. It was a few years old, which would could definitely explain why there are some bugs because occasionally you know microsoft updates sharepoint they change stuff and and kind of the hidden message there is they break stuff we all know about that so this uh this did start to cause an issue which is why i've um i've already submitted a change to update that but uh in here, you'll see the view requirements. You'll see that it just requires two fields, one of which is already provided because that's the title field, and then the answer field. Now, I didn't mark the title field as required, but you could definitely go back and do that. Uh, but what you will do here is you will, at the top of this page, you will click on this JSON file. That's the actual formatter we're going to be using with this. 
you'll see the copy raw file button that's just going to copy all of this text here. This, all this JSON stuff, this is the actual formatter. This is what tells SharePoint, we want to present this data in a custom way. It's all using out of the box SharePoint, but we're just giving it some style. Uh, so we got some extra style points on this. So we're going to go back to here. We're, we're on our formatting screen. We, this is where we could do alternating rows or conditional formatting. But down here, you'll see advanced mode. This is what we want. This is how we'll see all of this JSON stuff. So in between here, I could drag this out to give us a wider view. I'm just going to select everything, hit the backspace key, and then paste this in. Now, this isn't everything uh, because let me show you what it looks like today at the time of recording. If we preview this, uh, let me save this, close it, and refresh, you'll see this. Now, here's the issue that I found. This description, or the, the answer, sorry, the answer, is, is kind of narrow, uh, so it, it doesn't quite look right. So we need to make one more tweak to this. But first, this might be test data I'm working with, but in your environment, you're going to be using production data. How do you protect that data? That brings us to this video's sponsor. Today, many organizations rely on Microsoft 365 for everything from email, collaboration, conferencing, and calendars, to documents, internal communications. Yet this critical data can be lost as easily as it's created. Threats like cyber attacks, retention gaps, or even a simple delete click can leave data inaccessible and cause costly downtime. Nakivo Backup and Replication seamlessly bridges this gap to ensure your Microsoft 365 data and Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams is backed up and easily recoverable. You can send Microsoft 365 backups and backup copies anywhere, local folders, cloud platforms, NFS and SMB shares, tape media, and duplication appliances. The solution offers advanced ransomware protection features that include backup encryption and immutability. Microsoft 365 data loss does not need to happen. With Nakivo backup and replication, you can ensure maximum protection of Microsoft 365 data. Make sure to check out Nakivo in the link in the description below for a free 15-day trial. So we've got to put this bug fix in place uh, because if you don't see it in here, if it looks this short and the fix isn't in there yet, there'll be there'll be an additional amount, uh, additional block of text uh, to apply a row formatter to this as well. So I've already got that in my clipboard. I'll, I'll also, by the way, include this in the video description uh, just to make sure you can get to this thing immediately. So we'll wait for this formatter screen to come up. And then we're just going to add this in. So what we'll do is right after this additional row class, we'll add a comma, hit enter. And then this is the extra stuff we're going to be adding in. It's this row formatter. And in here, we're kind of defining what is going to be in every row. We're actually, you know, the, the earlier part here is defining the grouping uh, or telling the formatter that we are using grouping. And here's the information on that and some styling. The row formatter is actually going to what that that's the part that will actually make us have that wider answer text. You'll see that here we're setting the, setting the width to 100 percent and we're setting the text content to answer. So that's how we're getting the answer content on the screen and as wide as we could possibly get it. So we'll save this, close this, and refresh. And now if we expand it, now that looks better. So now we need to add this to our SharePoint page so you can see how this thing looks uh, with all the other content. So I'm gonna go back here. I will uh, go into edit mode. Let's add in a new section. Uh, one third right will do. That way we can have something else uh, to the right of this one, maybe quick links or something like that. Let's add a new web part. It'll be the list web part since we are applying this formatter to a list. Then we'll select our FAQ and hit the properties because we need to set the view on here. So the view will be set to that new view we created, FAQ. And then we can hide the command bar. We could hide the see all button. That'll kind of clean this up a bit more. Uh, so because we want this to be more of a display only type of uh, web part, we don't need it to be interactive other than expanding and collapsing those questions. So we'll hit that button. We'll save this. Let's republish the page and check it out.
So we've got the frequently asked questions. We could expand and collapse them. They actually do co look quite a bit like those co-pilot ones. Now, there's some more styling we can apply to this. There's a lot of tweaks that we can do to uh, to customize this. That's getting a pretty deep into JSON formatting, though. So if you're interested in that kind of thing and understanding all the different style attributes you can do or all the other little tricks, maybe hyperlink out to things, then definitely check out that JSON course I've got linked below. And as a bonus tip, maybe you want to use different column names. Maybe you already have a list and you want to use this style of markup or, or uh, this style of presentation on your existing data. Well, what you could do for that is you just need to update the column names that are being referenced. If we go back into this formatter, if we start to look through here, you'll see what column names it's actually referencing. You'll see that the answer is being pulled from right here, this answer reference. So if you were to call answer some other field, you would just need to use that same uh, internal column name, not just the display name, it has to be the internal name, to, uh, you need to add that right here in place of answer. So that's an extra bonus tip in case you want to start customizing this without having to learn too much. Now, if you like this kind of solution, you want to see more, then hit, click that like button and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to see more amazing JSON samples, then just click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.